A big RV company sent their lawyers after me. They are demanding I remove two videos I did about frame failure. That and more next. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. I have been RVing since the 80s and for about the last eight months I have been doing videos about the good and bad in the RV industry. And obviously I have ruffled feathers because I have a cease and desist letter from Lippert. Lippert is a large RV company. They make a lot of components for the RV industry including frames. So I will talk about that. First of all I want to talk about how we got here oh my goodness this has been quite the ride so about a year ago i kept seeing story after story on facebook of someone buying a new rv having a ton of problems often they would be covid campers and then the manufacturer or the dealer not standing by the product, not helping the customer. So my whole, I, my whole reason for doing these videos is to get them help. I'm really pleased that I've been getting that help, but I've also been getting some pushback. So before I get to what Lippert is upset about, I wanna talk about the first run-in that I had with an RV company. So I reached out to Tiffin on behalf of Steve and Julia back in January. I was really pleased to hear from the president of Tiffin, Lee Tiffin. Tiffin, by the way, brought in like $600 million in revenue, I believe in 2022. So they're not small and they're owned by Thor. So this is a huge company. When Lee Tiffin responded, I was really pleased because he said, yes, he's willing to go on camera and and talk about what he could do for Julia and Steve. Well, he said, let me go ahead and assemble a team and we'll all get together on camera. So that's what we did. He brought like about five people from his executive team, but once they were assembled, he said, no, you cannot record. He said, let's talk off the record. Of the 20 minute conversation, 18 minutes of that was them pressuring and intimidating me trying to get me not to publish the video. First, Lee said our 1,100 employees are not gonna be happy about this video. It's gonna make them sad. We really want you to do something positive. He said, why don't we fly you out? Let's give you a tour of the factory. Let's just really do a feel-good story. And I said, Lee, this will be a feel-good story because you will look like the hero for helping Steve and Julia. Steve and Julia, by the way, had a brand new motorhome that was cracking the fiberglass walls and the roof were cracking. So it was quite a serious problem. The pressure continued. Lee said, what can I do for you in order for you not to publish this video? And he kept asking that question. Then the marketing director chimed in and said, Liz, we will make you a Tiffin ambassador. Now, I don't know about you, but at the time I had an Alpha motorhome. I was like thinking to myself, how could I be a Tiffin ambassador if I don't own a Tiffin? What are they saying? I don't know. I kept saying no. And here's why, because in this conversation, Lee said, look, the reason why I don't want this video to go out is that other people with Tiffins, if they have problems, they're going to want me to help them too. And I was like, okay, this video has to go. And it went. And if you watch that video, you saw that I gave Tiffin all that credit for helping them because they did. I took the high road. I did not share this story. But I think their tactic is telling for how the RV industry works. I learned that number one, anytime I have contact with anybody in the RV industry, I need to make sure it's recorded. I need to protect myself, not necessarily to make that video become a YouTube video, but to protect myself because again, they spent 18 minutes of a 20 minute conversation trying to intimidate me. I had all these men on sort of like a Zoom call, staring me down, pressuring me, trying to get me to, I guess, buy me out to not post the video. I'm not gonna have any off the record conversations. If they're not gonna talk to me, on camera recorded then you know we can go back and forth on email so here comes Lippert the first email I get from them is from their chief legal officer and I didn't respond the very next day I get an email from Jason Lippert he is the CEO of Lippert Lippert by the way is a multi-billion dollar company I think they did 5 billion in revenue in 2022 3.8 billion in revenue last year 2023 
And he says, hey, let's have a conversation off record. Let's talk. And I said, no, no, I really need to have this conversation recorded. And he says, oh, well, I've never heard that before. Seriously, let's do a conversation off the record. And I said, no, I've learned my lesson. It seems like there are some RV companies out there that like to threaten, intimidate, or try to buy out social media influencers. I want no part of that. We can only talk if it's recorded or we can continue the conversation via email. So a couple days go by and I get this cease and desist. So huh, the cease and desist is about two videos I did about frame failure. And it's not about Patrick and B sharing the story that they had with their grand design frame failure, but the informant. I talked about an informant and I read statements he made about Lippert and those statements were what was upsetting to them, very much upsetting. And I'm not doing any off the record conversations. I put that policy in place to protect myself and Lippert is trying to use that policy against me. What they are saying is when they offered to talk with me about my concerns, I refused unless it was recorded. And for some reason they have a problem with that. And I feel like that's the best way. That is the absolute best way. And I will keep that policy in place. I am consulting with a lawyer, but likely because they are a billion dollar company, likely I will have to remove both videos. They also want me to make sure that I retain anything uh, related to this as far as messages, videos, and that kind of thing. So, so excuse me if I'm a little bit stressed. You also may have noticed um, that, I don't know, a month or two ago, I rapidly sold my motorhome. In fact, I sold it in 24 hours. And lots of people were like, what's up with that? What's up with that? And I said, well, you know, it, now's a good time to fly under the radar. Well, the incident with Tiffin is what got me thinking, hey, you know, I'm in this very recognizable motorhome. I'm not so worried about Tiffin and other big companies like that, but my videos are making a difference. And what about that half crazy salesman who sees that sales are way down on new RVs and he watches Liz saying, you know, you probably don't wanna be buying a new RV out of Indiana, maybe in, that was built in the last five years. And if it was me, I would be buying something used. And maybe that, you know, half crazy salesman might come after and, you know, slash my tires, whatever. I'm just the kind of person I don't want to worry. I just want to live my life. I want to enjoy my life. And I love that motorhome. The RV that I have now, I love just as much. So I'm super happy the way that deal went. It was perfect. I love the RV I have right now. It's actually number 11. And I'm sorry that I can't show it to you. It's just the world we live in. And you're also probably wondering, why am I not in my RV? Well, I think I'm gonna be out of my RV for a little bit until all this blows over. Just kinda of catch my breath. I'm gonna keep on giving you videos about the good and bad of the RV industry. I will make sure that I get these videos out to you in a way that I will not get any further cease and desist letters because that is a little stressful to get that. I have never gotten any kinds of threats of legal action before. I've never had anyone demand that I remove videos. So, huh, I, um, I so appreciate you. And if you wanna support me, absolutely, please like, subscribe, and share. Let me know any questions that you have. And if I can't answer them, it's probably because I can't answer them. But I'm not gonna go dark. I'm gonna keep bringing you videos. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.